Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. Thank you very much for keeping it Y in the morning. My name is Ram Magugo. If you've just joined us and you're just in time for the next discussion of the day, youth and politics. Today is all about discussing BBI in by-elections. Remember last week we had by-elections held in different parts of the country, different political leaders uh, putting their best foot forward forward to support their preferred candidate and these candidates come from different political parties uda jubilee anc odm you know uh, ford kenya different leaders campaigning for their people and their people getting to win their ticket thereby meaning that they have a hold of their region. Well, this morning we shall be putting into focus how this translates into the general elections that we are expecting to have come 2022. Is this previously held by election the tone for the 2022 general election as the national politics took center stage uh, as it was seen during the uh, previously held by elections? Is this what we are expecting to see? Is this the violence we expect to see? How can we stop uh, these uh, you know, uh, th things that happened during the by-elections? We had so many people who got hurt during these by-elections. How can we put a stop to this? Is this more political rather than civil? How can we put an end to this? Is this what we expect to see? The hashtag as always is why in the morning at Ram Aguko at Y254 channel at, uh, uh, that is on, uh, on Twitter. Head over to Facebook. We are on, at Y254 on Facebook. Drop us a comment. We shall sample as uh, we continue with this conversation, your comments, and get to see what you are saying. Also, tell us where you're watching us from on this particular discussion. I'm joined by Lame Corina to my extreme left. He is the chairman of Hustler for Hustler Movement. Karibu sana Lamek. And, to, and next to me, I'm also uh, continuing with this conversation. I am with Kiragu Moridi, the CEO of Vijana Mbele Foundation. Thank you, sir. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. It's a good day that we are seeing um, by-elections held in the country. Is this what we expect from 2022? Uh, to some extent, yes. It was uh, an eye-opener of what you can expect, more so in terms of... Uh, Political, political intolerance mm -hmm. going forward. I think the country is so polarized, but we, that we have to do something urgently to solve the problem. Yeah. Uh, a simple election as a award MCA seat, attracting the national attention, even the police, uh, clobbering people just because of an MCA. It's so unfortunate. But well, think, uh, are you saying an MCA is of less? It's important. It's not less important, but the election itself is very small because the turnout can be around between two to two, three thousand people. Mm -hmm. Even the winner was uh, had a margin of less than three hundred. So it's not an important in, uh, election that we must focus as a nation. As a nation, mm -hmm. we can leave the locals to to pick their own leaders without interference. So it's a thing that we must look into urgently. Be, be, before it boils over mm -hmm. 2022. 2022. Yeah. Do, do, do you agree with him? Is this what we expect up 2022? Yes, I beg to agree uh, with him. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a reflection of what we expect in come 2022. Mm -hmm. But again, it's very unfortunate uh, and sad story for our country to see fracas and violence uh, in these polling stations where the constitution enshrines that we should practice peaceful elections. But now, what we saw, uh, especially in parts of Kilimani, in Kilimani Primary School, where the uh, by elections were taking place, we saw intimidation by police and violence. And I think this is not the way to go. And we have been here before. It's, it feels like a deja vu. Kenya has been faced by political violence during elections. Mm. But again, I beg our leaders to desist from uh, involving in violent ideologies that will cause political instability in our country. So, but you're saying, you're, you're, you're talking about intimidation by the police. Why are the police also, you know, are pushed to the extent of, you know, uh, throwing out tear gas canisters? Is it that they were pushed 
and that they had you know to do it that they had to you know uh, come out and bring sanity to the polling stations would you blame the police or the people well ram it's all evident uh, through the videos and uh, photos you can see in the social media we saw that uh, poli police were intimidating those particular uh, representative those it, allied specifically those allied to the deputy president that's what you believe my brother that that's what i saw it's evident it's all over <laughs> social media <laughs> huh? yeah. yeah that was the case actually Ram. because in uh, in kiamu kama in kisi yeah. the aspirant there was arrested even before getting to the polling station so which piece was he bl br breaching before he go to the polling station he was just outside his gate then the police pounded on him i'm looking at so uh, okay so since since now this is what is on, on, in in the public domain you know some leaders were you also seen kicking back tia gaskani says back to the police is that something that you would expect of of, of our very own leaders why could the police target their leaders? He is a man, one person. If he's broken the law, why can't you arrest him and take him to the custody? But you've given an example of someone who was also arrested. Yes. So if, if they are arrested, buyer. If they are thrown No, you cannot before. just arrest somebody <laughs> without any, any charge. Yes. The, the, the MC was, the, the aspirant was coming out of his house, mm -hmm. just a few meters from his house, going to the polling station. Then he was arrested. So I think there was a coordinated kind of a thing from yeah. the police to intimidate a certain group of uh, politicians because yeah. it was all over the country Pol politicians allied to the deputy president that is the uda party were arrested en masse everywhere from from london in nakuru kiamokama in kisi matungu everywhere they were arrested mm -hmm. so we cannot say that all of them were causing mayhem so it was a coordinated thing from the police service and should not be so because the police under the new constitution should be independent mm. should not take orders even from the minister in charge of the interior and uh, okay I, i'm looking at the violations that took place in uh, matungo let's head over to western yes I'm, uh, so uh, we had uh, uh, the violations that took place in matungo in uh, kakamega county and uh, kabuchai in bungoma where we had uh, you know um, winnings for anc party and uh, that goes to the incident Damsola Budavadi and also for Ford Kenya party that goes out to uh, Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula and uh, these two wins in, 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 in Kabuchai and uh, Mat Matungu uh, also showed a great level of impact that uh, these two political parties have or the hold that they have on the region what do you make of this um from from the western block let me come to you um Kirago. well uh, in my perspective uh, uh in uh, the by-elections in uh, the western region mm -hmm. and i says as i said earlier we kenya we have a representative democracy and in which we have competitive politics mm -hmm. in which there is a winner and there's a loser mm -hmm. but again uh UDA being a new party mm. in the in the political scene yeah. I must say it's a win for them since we, we saw uh, the candidates garnering some, some at least a, a quite a good percentage of the votes and I say and I I say that uh, it's good for politics that uh, we indeed had good results and good by elections mm. and I must say it's a good move mm -hmm yeah and uh, for for so in your view you're saying it's it was a a litmus paper for uda to see their hole in the region sure not a litmus paper for someone like for example boni halwale who is vying for uh, the governor gubernatorial seat in the region was it a litmus paper for someone like boni halwale to see uh, you know uh, uh, whoever will get a hold of the the seat we are looking at ford kenya's uh, uh, a win for the seat, most uh, uh, ANC's win for the seat. They retain their positions, so it's more of a positive impact for UDA rather than ANC and Ford Kenya. Yeah, that's why I say that they always a winner and they and and uh, a loser, mm -hmm. and it's good for the winners because uh, in the Western region we have the popular party, mm. the popul the ANC and uh, the Ford Kenya. Yes, and we we did see that they retained their seats yeah. which is good for them mm. but again for UDA being a new 
political oh, party yeah. in the scene. Mm -hmm. It's a win for them since the, the candidates all also got uh, quite a good percentage of the votes. Mm. Yes, Ram, I can say for the UDA, which maybe I'll belong to in future, it, you, was, a, you, it was a lesson. You will join, you will, you are joining UDA? Probably, maybe, you never know. Who are joining UDA? Badu, 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 mambo. So, so Ram, I can say that it was a lesson for us uh. to see how we can improve this baby, because we're in the baby steps, we just formed not, not so many months ago. So for us, it's a, it's a lesson. We know where to, to tighten and mm. where to improve. Mm. But uh, coming to your question early, you said that uh, if it was a little must test for the lower unity, yes. which has been elusive for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I could say so because uh, these two gentlemen are going to believe in themselves more, that they are coming together can actually bring out something positive. Because mm. you, you remember they, they divided the seats. Mm. Usali as Ford Kenya went to Kabuchai, and uh, ANC's, what do you call Msali as ANC went to Matungu. Yeah. So that subdivision say, is saying that you, you are popular in this place, take this. You are unpopular in this place, take this. So this unity will, will actually be a, what do you call It's not good for Raila Odinga. I'm what seeing uh, the, their candidate did not get the seat. Yes. Mm. Because the two gentlemen from the lawyer land will be more bold. Mm. They are likely to front one person to go for the presidency. Mm. And you remember Western has been for Arela's bedrock for a long time. Mm. So they're coming together. It's really going to be a headache for the gentleman, mm. Raila Odinga, because the two are going to form a very serious pact. I'm, 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 seeing, I'm seeing the former Matungu member of parliament, uh, David Were of uh, ODM party that also uh, in regards to what you're talking about this violation actually it was his uh, second defeat in three years yes having lost the seat back in the 2017 elections yes this confirmed the the idea that ODM is failing the popularity of ODM is going down in the western region mm. and uh, the rail Odinga led party is in danger of facing a serious threat coming 2022. Mm. And uh, this shows that Raila Odinga's options are going low per day mm. because uh, if the handshake will not work, then the core principles in NASA are coming stronger. Mm. Is going to have a problem going forward. I'm looking at what uh, um, uh, 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 some anal analysts are saying. Uh, some are talking about uh, the country's new level of uh, or political um, you know, discourse changing. We are looking at uh, people like uh, uh, Senator Cleophas Malala, Lugar, member of parliament, Ayub Savula. We had uh, also people like uh, Titus Kamala, who emerged during these elections as, you know, the, uh, who are emerging to be key leaders in their, in their own uh, way. So um, are we seeing people, uh, new kids in the block, are we seeing UDA coming up with uh, you know, new strategies that can actually uh, be a threat to national leaders that we know of, like Honorable Raila Odinga? Uh, well, I must say that UDA being a new party in the political scene, mm. it's really a threat to the political class. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you an example. Yes, yes uh, give it. We had the Msambweni by-elections. Mm -hmm which was Raila's bedrock. The, uh, the UDA won during those by-elections. Mm. And that gives you a signal and a reflection of what we expect from the UDA party. It's big and it's huge. Well, uh, Jubilee party also we have, um, they shared wins in the by-election for, for, for Thursday in Nakuru County. We had UDA candidate for London Ward, Anthony Nzuki, was declared the winner. Uh, for, for for this particular uh, by-election and uh, Jubilee also had its own win. You are saying UDA is coming up as a force to reckon with. What about Jubilee party that is also gaining its own wins for these by-elections? I think um, Jubilee is a, is a gone case. Come on, they are winning, they are winning by-elections. Jubilee is a gone case. They are winning by-elections. Okay. I, cannot, I can attribute the win at uh, Healthgate in Naivasha to the local politics, mm. because we always, we always say 
of all politics are very local. Mm -hmm. Jubilee had a strong candidate. They chose the, that lady. Uh, I forgot the name. And on our side, our candidate was not so strong. But going by the figures and the money the, the Jubilee Party used in London, mm -hmm. and they still lost, I can only con confirm that the Jubilee is a gone case. It cannot resurrect itself. It's a shell of itself. Mm. You find a, a secretary general who in the previous election was just for doing administrative work, going to London to campaign for an MCA seat, whereas we could, have, we could be having the, uh, the elected M MPs and leaders of the Jubilee campaigning for the party. But these are uh, a, a secretary general coming out of office, going to the award to campaign for an MCA and still lose. What do you make of that? Interesting. What do you make of it? <laughs> you tell me. Well, I, uh, I must. You agree, with, you, you agree with, with what he said? I agree with him. I totally agree. <laughs> well, uh, you see, uh, we have seen the fights in the Jubilee house, and we can say it's a Ramshako house. Mm. It's falling apart, uh, starting with uh, the dehipping of the leaders in the both the Senate and uh, the National Assembly. And now, a house that is kicking people, its own people, out of the block, it's falling apart. And uh, he has said uh, an example of uh, the Secretary General going to campaign for an MCA in uh, Health Gate Ward. You can see they, they are weak and uh, they, are, they are helpless. And now, did, 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 did William Brutus also show support for them some when they buy election? Uh, uh, nominee for you there when uh, they were campaigning? Not direct support. Not. Photos were there. He didn't campaign for him. Just they met for a strategy meeting, maybe. He was not there. He never stepped in somewhere. And this, this brings me to your early question. Yeah. If there's a change in political discourse in the country, and it's, it's a boost, absolutely yes. Because uh, the previous the previous endorsement elections, it's almost coming to an end, where if you had a kingpin from, your, from a certain area, mm. you're almost certain of clinching the, the vote of that region. I think the new, the new kids in political space are doing a, good, a great job, where you are going to talk to the citizenry directly. You don't have to involve kingpins or kingmakers from regions. Mm. So the people of Kinam like, like Malala, People, people like uh, Ndilinyoro, the Kimanichungwas, they are going to the ground, speaking to the issues affecting people. So I think going forward, that's the new method people are going to use, going direct to the people. That's why in New Day we are saying, one wanainchi watamua. So mm -hmm. we're going to tell the people issues and tell them these are the positives, these are the negatives. So mm -hmm. what do you decide as a, as a people? even in the coming referendum. Let's look at what uh, also took center stage in the past one week. We had Senator Man, the Sen Sen Senate Minority Leader, Senator James Orego. He accused officials within Harambe House of trying to derail uh, Raila Odinga's presidential journey. According to Orego, he said this, and I quote, I want to warn some top civil servants paid by taxpayers' money to stop meddling in the country's political leadership. What do you make of this, Kirago? Well, uh, this shows that uh, there is some disorder and uh, fragility within the handshake mm. uh, issue. And uh, these people coming out, you remember James Orengo is a handler of Raila Odinga, a main handler of Raila Odinga. Mm. And him coming out saying that their issues and forces within government that they are blocking, mm. uh, trying to block Raila Odinga from presidency, presidency come 2022. This shows that BBI is all about 2022. Mm. Why, why all these issues? Uh, where else the, you, you're saying that BBI is not ab about 2022? I'm looking at the rally that uh, Raila was uh, supposed to attend to. The rally that he missed. He was uh, supposed to appear yesterday at a rally that was scheduled to, uh, to, 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 to have him give you know, um, very uh, important remarks. According to sources, they were, they were expecting big, a big announcement on this rally that was uh, uh, at Kamukuji grounds, uh, where he missed. Uh, so, Senator Irungu Kangata said this, and I quote, 
we want President Uhuru uh, not to enter any political partnership with Raila, but he refused, and the government started fighting us. Now he can see for himself. What do you make of this, uh, Lamek? Uh, Ram, I think uh, the foundation of Handshake was, uh, was made of uh, sand. It was from the onset, it was a, a blackmail process where people used others to gain something. No one used anyone? From my perspective. Probably. In your view, let's talk facts. Yes. Um, looking at the handshake and uh, what was what is there in the public domain on Robaila Odingami, yes, they met, they had a handshake, and uh, it's also in the public domain that no one was coerced into doing anything. But uh, you can see what is coming out now. Yes. Where uh, Orengo's, uh, the the MP for Arieda, what's the name? They are coming out in a coordinated manner mm. to try coerce the president into doing something. You're talking about Honorable Otenia Molo? Yeah. On, over the weekend, they were, they were speaking some, some sort of coordinated messages to the president. Mm -hmm. Even if he was not addressing them directly, I think the, the problem started when the said civil servant took over the, child, the leadership of the BBA process, mm -hmm. uh, where the ODM were not happy. Mm -hmm. Probably from the analysts, even from the front page of the today's paper saying, uh, the said civil servant starves the odium of cash. I'm looking at what uh, happened on Saturday. We had the National Assembly Minority with Junette Mohammed, who asked uh, the, the president to bar the interior principal secretary, that is Karanja Kibisho, from uh, BBI activities while Honorable Orengo accused, and I quote, a gang at Arambe House of frustrating the handshake by crafting an alternative power succession strategy. Honorable Jeanette warned that the BBI train is at risk of crumbling ahead of the referendum uh, if this is not considered. That's what I'm saying. Why will the two brothers fight if they are pushing the same agenda? You're talking about Raila and... The uh, Raila side and the Uru side. Because mm. Uru has the civil servants and a few politicians on his side. Mm. Raila has politicians from the ODM side on his side. Mm. So this side of Raila is accusing the Uru side of of sabotaging the process. If the goal is the same, why the fight? If the PS is spearheading a process to, to actualize the dream, then why is the fight? So mm -hmm. I think the ODM side is trying to blackmail the president mm -hmm. into uh, maybe barring the PS from spearheading the process so that the ODM can have a pleading and, and, uh, and lead the process because they, they think it is tied to the 2022 general election. Irungu uh, Kangara said that it's only Honorable Ruto who uh, stood with President Uru since the year 2012 uh, uh, and uh, 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 can be trusted, unlike Honorable Raila, who can walk out at any time. That's according to Senator Kangata. Well, uh, yeah, it's, sure, it's true that uh, Ruto has supported the president. Do you agree with this statement? Sure. Ruto has supported the president, Uru Kenyatta, mm. for the last, f f since uh, the year 2012. Mm. And you remember this was a two against seven, those from the NASA coalition, mm. the NASA alliance. Yes. And I think uh, this was not a walk in the park. It's a walk that uh, required sweat, blood, and water. And again, Ruto has tirelessly campaigned for the president and worked for him effort, effortlessly. And again, it's time that Uhuru embraces his uh, deputy and gives him a hand and supports him in 2022. I'm looking at uh, the claims that Honorable Ruto has been the greatest support of uh, of Ruto, uh, of, of Uhuru, saying that he is uh, someone who has uh, stood with the with president. You agree with that, Lamik? Yeah, I agree because okay. the, the deputy president stood for for with Uhuru since 2002, not even 2012. Since 2002, 2002 mm. when uh, the big leagues in Kano left to NAC, then mm. the people who remained with Uhuru after the former president, the late Mzemoi, endorsed the the current president. The few people remain in the president is William Ruto and maybe Msalem Davadi. The rest ran away to Kano. I want us to even, uh, even, yes. even when he was conceding defeat in 2002, mm -hmm. the person who was just next to him 
was William Ruto. So this is a gentleman who has proven loyalty over time. And we are not asking the president to endorse us. What we're just saying, let the process be fair. Don't intimidate us. Let's go direct to the people and talk to them what we want to do for this country. Who, who, who is us? Us, the nation. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yes. uh, let's bring this conversation to a close. Huh? So uh, let me finish with you, Kiragu. You're the CEO of Vijana Mbele Foundation. Sure. What's Vijana Mbele Foundation all about? Uh, Vijana Mbele Foundation is an unpartisan youth organization mm. that was established with a name to bring youth together mm. and give them a platform where we can create a socio-economic and progressive society for young people. Okay. Yeah. Hasla for Hasla, you obvious. No, not obvious. Maybe your perspective is different from mine. So uh, the Hustler for Hustler movement uh, is a mobilization group for the deputy president. It is a partisan, unlike my friend's movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that we've had enough of the, of the deputy president. We believe him. Mm -hmm. So we're just acting as messengers okay. uh, to, to the Mashinani people. We can tell them this is what the gentleman is planning for us as your fellow hustlers who come from Mashinani. Who is hustler? Kabisa. Uh -huh. So as your so, fellow hustlers, you believe in him? Yeah, we believe in him. So we're going to spread the message uh, all over the country so that we can convert as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So as I said last time, hustler does not mean that you're poor. It mm -hmm. means you are ready to work. You are ready to give your all uh, for your success. So you can have cars, you can have billions, but so long as you want to work more, for your dream, you are a hustler. So we are inviting everybody, even from the other side, they can come join the movement. It is not, it is not a, an us versus them. It, it is, is us empowering ourselves and making sure that everybody uh, succeeds. How can people find you on social media, Vijana Mbele Foundation? Uh, you can find us at social media, mm -hmm. at Vijana Mbele Foundation. Mm -hmm on Instagram, Vijana Mbele Foundation of Facebook, mm -hmm. Vijana Mbele Foundation on Twitter. All right. Yeah. Uh, Hasla for Hasla. Hasla for Hasla. H for H mm -hmm. on Twitter, H for H on Facebook. Uh, we are not on Instagram, but mm -hmm. we are planning to move there. And maybe YouTube. Maybe YouTube. Maybe I before I finish, uh, uh, I can shout out with my members. Uh, who, are watching, who, are who are watching the Hasla for Hasla movement, who are watching me today, mm. and the Solutions for Change group mm. which is also uh, a very strong uh, foot soldiers for the for the process all right thank you very much that is lame corina chairman for ha uh, the hustler for hustler movement and kiragu the ceo of vijana vijana mbele uh, foundation gentlemen it was a it was a pleasure great leaders taking center stage in national discussions thank you very much thank you that brings us to the end of uh, youth and politics so it was all about bbi and uh, 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 you know, BBI in by elections. What are your thoughts in regards to this? The hashtag, as always, why in the morning? We're taking a short break, we'll be back in a bit. Keep it Y254 more still to come.